welcome back to my channel. Today's video, whoo, this is one of my favorite videos to film every single year. Today we are doing my uh, intro to my 2019 project pan. So if you guys didn't know, I've been doing these year long projects for, oh geez, probably five years. I think this might might be my fifth year. I've been doing them for a long time and I really love doing year-long projects. I think they're my favorite projects to do because you have so much time to work through them and um, sometimes I go in, I, I always go in waves. I feel like I go in waves with the way that I use my products in these projects. So I might be like really religious about using them for like weeks and then forget for like another few weeks. So that's why I like doing these longer projects. Now I did decide to continue on with my theme of um, like last year I did 18 in 2018, this year I'm going to be doing 19 for 2019. So if you missed it, I will link above my finale of my 2018 project. Last year's project did not go as well as my projects in the past have gone. Um, at the first few years I feel like I was super good at it, at doing these projects and I used up nearly every single product and um, then I got a little ambitious and started picking too many products or products that are too difficult to get through. So this year I was very thoughtful in my product selection. I tried to pick a variety of products, uh, meaning different categories for like for the face, so I didn't have too many of one type of product. I also tried to pick a variety of full size and travel size, so some of these you know, travel size items are obviously so much easier to use up. I wanted to make sure I had quite a selection of those. Um, and then I was also really thinking about what products do I go through most frequently? And for me personally, it's complexion products. So foundations, concealers, primers, and powders. Those I go through fairly quickly. So I did try to make sure I was very heavy in selecting in that category. And then lip products are very, very difficult for me to use up. So I pulled back how many lip products I picked this year. Let me count. I have three lip products this year. I think last year I had five. So I still have quite a few products, but you'll see in a second, the ones that I picked um, are products that are a little easier to use and I'll, I'll show you those when we get into the actual products. So anyway, I wanted to kind of explain my thought process in picking these products just because last year's, I don't think it was a fail. I don't think I failed on that product or project because I did use up half the product. This is like a tongue twister. I did use up half the products from that project. So I still feel like that was a great accomplishment and of the ones that I did not finish off, some of them went bad and then other ones, you know, I made good progress. I just didn't quite finish them. So I'm happy with what I did from that project, but it definitely made me kind of consider what I'm picking and be a little bit more selective this year. So. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot to mention before we jump in and that is I am planning to do updates the same as I have the last couple years. So you can expect an update about every quarter. There's gonna be, so there will be four updates this year. Um, so yeah, that way you guys can kind of keep track of where I'm at and hopefully I'll be making some progress on these as we go. Like I said, there's 19 products, so we're gonna jump in because there's a lot to go through. So let's start with face primers because I did um, I feel like this was a category that I could pick more than one if I wanted to, so I did pick two primers to use up this year. The first one is this Almay 5-in-1 primer. This is one of my favorite primers. It's a great drugstore primer. Um, it's really good for all skin types, I feel like, because it's very hydrating and it also has the color correcting beads in it. Um, so I'll give you guys a close up. So I have not owned this primer that long. I feel like I got it near the beginning of last year or maybe the end of the year prior. So, and I've already used up half. <laughs> I feel like this will be really easy for me to get through because I like reaching for it. And this is a product where you use quite a bit when you use it because you have to apply it to your full face. So I feel like this is one of the easier products in this project. I don't think this will be difficult for me to go through. I'm pretty confident that I will get through this one this year. And since I knew that one would be kind of easy for me to do, I went ahead and picked a second primer. Um, so this time I did pick, for this one I did pick a uh, deluxe sample size. So um, since I do have one already, I didn't want to pick like a full size, you know, full product. So this one is from Peter Thomas Roth. It's the Skin to Die For No Filter Mattifying Primer. So I do like this primer, but I don't think I'll use it much 
in the winter. This is something I'm definitely going to reach for more in the spring summer when my skin can be a little bit more oily because it is mattifying and it's not drying. I would not I would not call it drying, but it is definitely mattifying. So this is something I will definitely be using in the spring summer and it is, you know, just this little deluxe sample size. So I'm pretty confident that I can still get through this this year. All right, moving on from primers, foundation is the next category. This is another one that is easy for me to go through. So I did, I did decide to go ahead and pick out two products for this category as well. And the first one is this Lancome um, Tante Idole Stick Foundation. This is one of my favorite foundations. This is something I talk about a lot. I think this is like my fourth full size of this uh, foundation. And I do already have a second one of these uh, because this one is to the point where it's rolled up all the way and the product is flat. So you actually have to now dig it out from the inside. So what I like for this foundation, normally I like to use it when I'm traveling, but once it gets to the point where you have to start digging it out, because I have these little spatula tools here at home to do that, I kind of demote this to an at-home foundation and I use it here because it is a little bit more difficult with those spatulas to scoop it out and apply it. So it's not something I would want to travel with uh, once it gets to this point. So for that reason, I I've had it kind of to the point where I need to dig it out and I haven't been using it for a few months. So I decided I needed to put this in a project so I will use it up. Um, I have gone through many of these before and done that where I dig out the product from this point. And even though it looks like it's probably almost gone, it's really not, it goes pretty deep. So I could probably get another like 20 uses at least out of this. So I thought it would be good to put it in this project. So I will make myself use it and get this out of my collection. Um, so yeah, I do love it. I, it's just a little bit more work to use it at this point. And since that will be pretty easy to get used up uh, once I start making myself do it, I did go ahead and pick a second foundation for this project. This is actually the foundation I have on today. I have a lot of these products on today. I'll try to mention which ones I'm wearing, but this is from Stellar. This is called, what do they call this? This is called the, doesn't say on here. I can't remember the name of this foundation, but it's a really nice foundation. I think they only have one foundation in their collection, um, but I do have this shade S03, by the way. I really like this foundation. It is more of a light foundation. I would call it a medium coverage foundation and it's very liquidy. Um, I prefer applying this with a wet beauty blender. I feel like that's the best way to get a good application on this. So I really like using this when I'm not feeling like applying a very heavy full coverage because it is a little bit more lightweight. Um, I feel like I will probably use this a lot this year. Um, as you guys probably have heard, I am expecting and I know in the past with my other children, uh, after having the baby, I always wear very minimalistic makeup. Well, first of all, because I don't have as much time to get ready usually, but also, I don't know, there's just something about being a new mom. You just want a quick, light, natural look. So I have a feeling I'll be reaching for this a lot this year. So I definitely thought this would be a good one to put in this project. Okay, the next category is concealers. This is another one I did go ahead and pick two products because these are easy for me to go through. And both the ones I picked, I've had for a little bit, so I kind of want to use them up as well. This one is from NARS. This is the creamy concealer, and I have the shade Chantilly. So this shade is definitely just my winter shade. So I really need to get using this up now because um, I won't be able to start using it again until next fall, winter. and. Um, I don't know if it will stay good that long. So I really want to try to get this used up early in the project. It is, um, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a couple spots where it is already starting to scrape the sides, but I am still having an easy time getting it out of the packaging and I have not removed the stopper yet. Now I have gone through a full size, one of these NARS creamy concealers before. And I do know that once I removed that stopper, I had so much more product. Like it lasted me another like three weeks after that point. So I know this will still take me a bit to get through, but I have a feeling I should be able to get through it before like the midway point of the year. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. So, um, yeah, that I think will be fairly easy to go through. The second concealer that I picked for this project I am actually wearing today. This is the NYX HD concealer and I don't know what shade I have. Oh, I have the shade porcelain. This actually reminds me very much of the NARS creamy concealer. I feel like the texture of these are very similar. Coverage is very similar. Um, I really like this concealer. I think this one I'm also getting kind of close to um, using up. I don't know if you can take a stopper out in this. I don't see like an actual stopper in here. So I feel like I feel like this one I will have used up fairly early on because I again I do have sides already scraping in this one, but I feel like this had a lot less product. But this only has 0.11 ounces. So it's not a lot of product. I think I can use that up pretty easily. All right, let's move on to, uh, actually, let's do this. I have one color correcting product in this project. So I don't color correct every day, but I feel like if I put this in my project, 
I should have a fairly easy time using it because I love it so much. It's the CoverGirl uh, True Blend Pre-Touching Palette. So I really do like all three of the shades from this color correcting pal palette. However, I think the yellow one is the one that I will use the most. So I'm gonna concentrate on this one this year. I'm gonna see if I can use up the entire thing. We will see. I don't really know how deep this is because I haven't owned this for, for very long. Um, but I really, really love the formula of this um, color corrector. It's a little bit more sheer. It's not like super thick or heavy. Um, so I really like that for my under eyes because I do have fine lines and wrinkles and and I do usually go over this with a uh, concealer and then a powder, so I don't want any like super thick product underneath, but this just does a really good job of brightening up my under eye uh, without getting too thick. So I really like it. I feel like if I can remember to reach for it, I shouldn't have a hard time using this product up. So uh, this is one of the more challenging products for, for this project. I definitely wanted to still challenge myself and not make it all super easy. So this is one of the more difficult products, but I still feel like I can use it. So we will see how I do on this guy. All right, and then let's move on to face powders. I did pick out, again, two for this category. This is another category that I know I go through quickly, so I figured might as well double up here. So I did pick a deluxe sample size, or it's actually the travel size version of the Cover FX. Uh, this is the Illuminating Powder. So I really like this one for my under eye. I use it to set my under eye. I did use it today. And I mean, it's still fairly full. I wanna say it's like three quarters full. I've had it a while, but I also have a full size version of this and other powders that I like using. So I haven't been very like consistently using this guy, even though I have had it for a while. So I thought because I have this in a mini and a full size, I should really just use up the mini. I have other small travel size translucent powders that I like for under eye setting and I don't need this one in my collection. So I thought I'll go ahead and use it because I love it and that way I can work it out of my collection and I figured this would be something that is doable for this project. It might be a little difficult because loose powder does take a while to go through, um, but I know that if I'm consistent with using it, which I know I can because I love it so much, I should be able to get that used up this year. Okay, and then the other powder that I uh, picked for the project is another one that I thought I can do this. So I was really careful when I was going through my drawers. I was looking at all the products in, uh, you know, I'd pull a drawer open and look through and I'm like, what's the easiest thing in this drawer to use? <laughs> and that's how I picked my products this year. So for the second powder, I did go ahead and grab this Rimmel Stay Matte because I have already hit pan on it. And it's one of my favorite face powders in a pressed version. I do find that these pressed powders are a little quicker and easier for me to go through for whatever reason than the loose powder so I don't think this will be too challenging and since I have already hit pan I feel like this is definitely doable um, so yeah this is the other powder I picked for this project okay moving on to some little bit more challenging products I did go ahead and decide to roll over one product that was in my 2018 project because I didn't quite finish it but I made a lot of progress and I think I can get this done this year I, I feel like I feel like I can do it this time. This is from Too Faced, it's the um, Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. It is a deluxe sample size and it is the old packaging. So that's what I have left. Um, I hit quite a bit of pan. I have a lot of pan showing in this product and even the sides where there is product left have flattened out quite a bit. So I definitely feel like this is, it's gonna be a little challenging because even, um, even though there's not a lot of powder in here, it is a little bit of a darker, um, bronzer I do have it on today it is a little bit darker so I go a little light-handed with it but also it's very hardly pressed so even though there's not a lot of powder it just like you don't need very much you know what I'm saying so um, anyway I feel like I can still definitely get through this this year this is kind of one of the medium products in the in the project I don't think it's gonna be one of the first ones gone but I also feel like I can get it used up this year as long as we're talking about cheek products let's talk about this next so I decided like I said I wanted some challenging products in this project and I decided decided I wanted to try to do a blush. I don't think I've ever included a blush in a project pan before. Now, I am just wanting to hit pan in this prod product. I'm not trying to use it up in its entirety this year, um, but it is also just a like deluxe sample size. I actually got in gratis, so it's, I don't know what you call this size, but it is a little, a little guy. And it's from Becca which I love the formula of Becca blushes. This is in the shade Flower Child. I think it's a beautiful shade. It is what I have on my cheeks today, although I feel like it's worn off a little bit already. Um, but anyway, I think it's a beautiful color. It's a very neutral color, so I feel like it'll go with so many different looks. It's just kind of a peachy, um, 
I don't know, just a peachy neutral color. So I feel like this will go with so many different looks. I feel like it will work for me year round. So I think I can really work on this. Also, I think I can even use it as an eyeshadow if I get to the point where I need to do that, if I need to be creative with it. So I definitely wanted to challenge myself at least a little bit. So this is going to be one of, um, I know this will be one of the last products at the end that I'm trying to make progress on, but I'm hoping I can at least get a good dip or maybe even see some pan showing by the end of the year. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Um, so this is another little bit of a challenging product, but this is something that I've had in my collection for a couple years now. And because it's cream based, I really wanna get some more use out of this. So I figured if I pulled this into this project, I would remember to use it more because I do really love this product. I just don't use it frequently enough. So this is called the Peter Thomas Roth 24 Karat Gold per Pure Luxury Lift and Firm Prism Cream. It has such a long name. Basically, this is a, well, it is a firming and lifting cream, so it is supposed to actually firm and lift the skin. So it is a skin treatment, but at the same time, it is like a liquid highlighter. So you could mix this in with a foundation to add a nice glow to the skin. You can wear it on its own underneath a foundation, um, but it is a little intense, or you can use it as a targeted um, highlighter. So it has a lot of different uses. That's why I thought it would be good for this project because I figured there's so many different ways that I can use this. I did just apply it all over my hands. You can see it has a very light golden color to it and definitely um, a good amount of shine. So if I want a more glowy look, I can apply this everywhere. I do also like using it as a targeted highlight sometimes as well. So I feel like there's so many ways I can use this product. I think I could definitely use it up if I am conscious about working with it more often. Okay, the next item, I think this will be pretty easy for me. Now this is brand new. I actually just took it out of the box today and it is what I have on my brows today. So I did use it just for the first time today, but this is from uh, Pure Cosmetics. This is called the Arch Nemesis four in one dual ended brow pencil. I did actually receive this one in PR very recently, like I said. So this uh, pencil has like the brush on this side for combing through your brows, but it is a double ended pencil. So I am gonna try to use up the product on both sides of the pencil during this project. So this side you have like the fatter um, triangular shape, looks like the Anastasia brow definer, um, that kind of shape for a brow pencil. And then this side you have the micro pencil. This is the side I used on my brows today. And I definitely uh, think this one I will use up first and then go to the other side because I prefer a micro pencil. I find them just easier to work with because I have very thin brows. But um, anyway, I definitely think I can get through this. I go through brow pencils like water because my brows are so sparse. I actually mostly fill them in. I mean, most of this is pencil that you're seeing. So I don't think it'll be difficult for me to go through this. I liked, I liked the way it applied today. So um, I don't think I'll have a hard time with it other than the fact that there are two sides from me to use up. Um, I'm not going to roll this up and show you guys where it's at because this is one of those pencils where when you click it, you can't uh, reverse it. So um, I can't really show you guys progress. It'll be one of those that I'm just surprised when it runs out. And yeah, that's the next thing in the project. All right. I do have another challenging product here. Um, I did, like I said, sprinkle some of these harder things in here. I did want to include at least one eyeshadow palette, even though I've never been successful in these products with eyeshadow palettes. So this time I decided to do a smaller palette and one that I really love. So I did pick one of the Huda Beauty Obsession palettes. You guys know how I feel about these. I love these palettes. I definitely have been obsessed with these palettes over the last year. This one is the warm brown palette. I do have it on my eyes today. I picked this particular shade combination because I feel like there's a lot of transition shades in here and a lot of shades that I will just reach for regularly. This one is perfect for setting my entire eyelid. This is a great everyday uh, transition shade. And then we have some great like deepening up shades and then this is a great eyelid shade. So I feel like I will use everything in this palette and I think it won't be too hard for me to make progress on this palette. Now my goal is just to hit pan on one shade. So that's it. I'm not gonna specifically pick a shade that I'm gonna try to work on. I'm just gonna see how it goes. I have a feeling it'll be one of these two here if I do hit pan. Um, Cause like I said, this I can use all over my lid for setting and this I can use as a transition shade. Even if I'm doing a different look with a different palette, those two I could use pretty much every day paired with anything I wanted and it would be pretty easy to do. So um, I'll give you guys a close up of where I'm at now. It's I mean, it's pretty full. You can see some like brush dips in them, but they're not um, really that, I don't know. There's not a lot of progress yet, but I will show you a close up. 
So that is what my palette looks like starting out. As you can see, there's not really any big dips other than the shade in the middle just because it's one of those foiled shades. So when you dip your finger, it does create a little divot. But other than that, um, yeah, not a lot of progress yet. So hopefully we can get some progress showing this year on this guy. Oh, one more reason I decided to pick this one. I don't have any plans to travel this year, but if I do end up traveling this year, this is one of the ones I love bringing when I travel. And that was one of my downfalls with the palette I picked last year for traveling. Um, we traveled a lot and I wasn't anticipating it. It just kind of happened. There was a lot of traveling going on last year. And um, yeah, it, I never wanted to bring that big cho chocolate bar palette that was in my project because it was just too big and bulky. But if I do do, if I do any traveling this year, this will be easy to pack. One more product before I move on to the lip products at the end here. Um, so I did decide I wanted to pull a facial spray into this project because my facial spray collection is getting a little out of control and I don't even, like I'm running out of room to even store what I currently have. So I have a lot of like half used bottles and I figured I just need to use some of these up. So I decided to pull in this one. This is the Ulla Henriksen Truth Facial Water. I thought this was a very versatile spray so that's why I wanted to pull it in. I like using this um, on days where I'm not wearing any makeup just like as a hydrating spray or I'll use it after I cleanse my face at night. Um, I also like layering it like if I put on a very drying foundation or if my face looks too powdery this is a great kind of like wake me up melt everything together kind of um, spray as well. I love the way it smells. I just think it's a nice all-around hydrating facial spray so and I have a lot of those so I thought this would be a good one to use up and get out of my collection um, and then again it is kind of like a travel size version um, it's just four fluid ounces and it is hard to see because of the label um, but it is to about right here currently so just a little bit below where the label begins um, so yeah I think that should be fairly easy for me to get through this year all right last but not least we have some lip products Okay, so for lip products, like I said, I have three. One of them I actually did roll over from last year's project. I forgot I did choose one other item from that project to roll over. This is the NARS lip gloss in the shade Chelsea's Girl. So um, I just, I had a couple different lip glosses in last year's product project that were very similar. So it made it very difficult to use this up, but it is just a deluxe sample size. It's little, I like the formula. It's easy to wear with almost anything because it's a very new, in fact, I have it on my lips right now paired with another product I'll show you in a second. Um, it's a, just a very like sheer neutral color. So you could like, so you can wear this over almost any other lip product or on its own if you wanted something super natural, but it just adds a nice kind of glossy look. So I think this should be easy to use if I remember to use it regularly. And then the other item that is on my lips today is this MAC lipstick. The reason I pulled this in is because it's getting old and I love it and I don't want it to go to waste. So I need to use this up this year or it will be going bad. Uh, this is from the, oh, what was the name of this collection? The Toledo. Mac Toledo collection from what was that three years ago you guys it was kind of old so um, this is the shade oxblood it is a matte shade it's a it's a very like neutral kind of peachy toned nude again it's what's on my lips today with that NARS gloss over the top so easy to wear I know I will reach for it I could even put this in my purse for like reapplications throughout the day and I think I will remember to use it that way um, I feel like I just I didn't use this enough because it was limited edition and I loved it and I didn't want it to run out, but now I'm like, oh my gosh, it's gonna go bad. It does still smell okay, so um, I just need to use this. And that's what I have left right now, a lot of it. There's a lot left. So I'm hoping, hoping I can use that before it goes bad or at least use a lot of it before it does. All right, and then the very last product for this project is a deluxe sample size of the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick in the shade Caramello. Again, a neutral shade. I decided to go all neutral this time with lip products because if I pick bold colors, I just don't use them enough to get them used up completely. And this is a beautiful kind of a pinky toned nude shade. And um, yeah, I like it. I like the formula of these liquid lipsticks. They are not super drying, but um, they definitely do dry down and don't transfer. So it's a really nice formula for a liquid 
lipstick. All right, you guys, I just realized as I was editing the footage that I forgot to talk about this. So um, I only filmed 18 items when I originally sat down to film this video and I didn't want to refilm the whole thing because I did put a lot of work into it already. So I thought I would go ahead and just insert this footage. So the last item that um, I have for this project is this eye, um, eyeliner from Sephora Collection. This is the retractable eyeliner and it is just a black shade. I have had this a while. Sorry, my camera's gonna keep focusing. Let me put this in frame so it stays in focus. I feel like I have had this in my collection for a while and these retractable liners, I do tend to go through these ones a little bit quicker. It is a very creamy and very black liner. I will roll it up all the way so you can see what I have left. I have a lot left, but because I do like using this both on my uh, lower lash line and my um, smoked out on my upper lash line sometimes, I even sometimes pop this in the waterline. It's not my favorite waterline pencil, but I will do that from time to time with this guy. I feel like I can hopefully um, get through this this year. Black liners are something I use quite often, so I think it shouldn't be too difficult to do so I did want to make sure I got this included in this intro so I do have the 19 products like I promised okay you guys those are all the products I have in the project for this year wish me luck it's a lot of products but um, like I said I feel like the majority of this is going to be fairly easy to do and I do have some more challenging products in here so I'm not you know three quarters of the way through the year out of everything but I still feel like I can do a really good job on this project so I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you have any questions or comments for me, leave those down below. I will link all the products down below in case you want to check anything out. And that's it for me today. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.